Welcome to the first episode of the Bobcast. Today we have Junior. This is season one, episode one. Like and subscribe if you like what we're doing here. But uh, I'm just going to start it out. Welcome to the Philippines, Junior. Welcome to the Bobcast. Glad to be here. Yeah. We're drinking some uh, vodka cranberries to start it out, you know. It'll get a little buzz going. Starting off late. Mm-hmm. Vodka's kind of a girl's drink. You know, I've been, I've been to a lot of parties in my life, and <laughs> it's always been like the girls are like, we don't drink whiskey, we want vodka. You got vodka or, or spiced rum? Yeah, like, oh. Coconut yeah. rum. Coconut rum, yeah. Reminds me of a uh, gay bar I worked in once. Um, all the gay guys, they like to drink coconut rum with Midori and all kinds of just foo-foo drinks, foo-foo drinks. Foo-foo. Yeah. But uh no, it's it's nice here in the Philippines, you know? It's uh it's a good life. We've uh been doing it for a few years. Junior's originally from here and uh left when he was uh how old again, Junior? Nine. Nine years old. Nine in nineteen ninety. Nineteen ninety he left. Sounds I got like what? I got here twenty years later, two thousand ten. And uh, our first time coming to Philippines together was 2014. And uh, I'd been trying to convince him for a few years to check it out, come back, you know. And so um, he eventually did. And I think he's liked it. This year? Oh, last year, I think. Yeah, last year it was. Uh, I yeah. Sold everything. Left from Florida, from the Floridians. Living in Florida, then came over here, but uh, came over here married. I came over here married. Now we're both divorced. Single in paradise. And the one thing about like Philippines is, it's good to have an insider that's seen both sides. You know, there's a lot of foreigners. They only see one side of Philippines. They really don't know from a Filipino perspective. On different things so it's uh it's cool that juniors got that knowledge of both being Filipino and also being a expat as we would call it I guess I really never liked that term like expat, expat. Is because you're um, you're giving up your other countries patriotism towards patriotism. the other cousin yeah so expat expat you don't want to be labels as a sex pat. Those guys are weirdos, like old creepy buggers, you know, like <laughs> just going around to slay, you know, and it's like, ugh. yeah, no, it's, it's, it's a trip, you know. Um, I think as foreigners, we really do, the two of us have authentically different perspectives than most foreigners because for me, like I, I kind of, uh, I came into the Philippines and got really close with a lot of you know, big timers from day one, you know, politicians and famous people and rich Filipinos and affluent Filipinos and movie stars. And and it's not very common with a lot of foreigners to get like into those circles. And so I kind of have a different perspective than most fil foreigners yeah, yeah. that come here. They they tend to be the beach bums and the, you know. Well, it depends on the person too. Yeah, or the mountain ones, you know, they look, you know, and, and, and granted, I think it's very honorable, you know, to live that, you know, that humble beginnings, you know, for a lot of them, I really admire it. Um, I got to say, I stepped into it differently, so, but uh, it's nice to see the variations. And Junior here, you know, his, his brothers, they're all Filipinos, and so they all married white girls. <laughs> He's the only Filipino that was like, Going back to Philippines, man. Only two married to white girls. Uh, only two are married to white girls, but it seems the two I hung out with mostly before. Married to white girls now. But, uh, and then you nothing, got two. Nothing wrong with that. Yeah, yeah. There's nothing wrong with white girls. We ain't going to put down the white culture. You know, this, we won't put down Filipinos on this show. This is, this is basically, you know, a show that's, you know, here for not only like 
the expats and for the Filipinos and for yeah, you I mean, know. If they have like they have questions and if they're having doubts, you know, before moving here and they have questions, you know, you can give them an idea of what to expect. Yeah, leave a comment if you have a question about something. But uh, you're thinking about moving to the Philippines. What kind of lifestyle you really want to live? I mean, we're doing pretty well here. We live good lives. You know, we've made some good decisions in the past and uh, able to really enjoy the Philippines. So we'll talk about the pros and cons about Philippines. Yeah, the pros and cons. I would because say there's quite a few. Quite a few. Quite a few pros and cons. The thing about the Philippines, I think it's a closer leap from the United States thing to like Thailand. Because everyone like, here pretty much speaks English, that's one thing. Mm. They understand. And everything's written in English. And yeah. all the contracts are in English. And uh, so it's that's the pros. The pros. The cons are like just because people think that they grew up a certain way in America and they have certain cultural you know values of different things here in the philippines for example there's different cultural values and it can be hard for people to adjust you know um it is an island nature like where we're from in hawaii it's very islandy so for us it's yeah. kind of easy thing to but i could imagine you're from alabama or like texas or uk or <laughs> wherever and it's different the culture the work ethics i'm not saying i don't like to make blanket statements but it's it's definitely a different, you know. Um, very slow. It's slower. Expect like, it to be. It's just gonna have patience, man. Yeah, and 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 you don't have a safety blanket like America, like our government, and a lot of Western cultures. Our government's really, you know, you got welfare. You have all kinds of stuff here in this culture. You don't have that really. You just gotta hustle. Yeah. And so a lot of foreigners kind of feel like maybe things are like, oh, you know, I got a bad shake on this deal or maybe I got this and, and that. I, and they're trying to operate businesses and they're trying to do it from a Western standpoint with different kinds of forms of... Yeah, no, they, they can't look, not, look at it that yeah. way. They have to be like, you know, especially yeah. going grocery shopping, going to the bank, etc. It's But for me, that trumps it all. People live in a hustle mode here. They're in a hustle mode. You got to hustle. Yeah, if, you, if you're not a corner and you don't have a pension or you don't have a retirement or you didn't make big bank in America, if you're like a commoner here, like if you're, if you're a common working class person, there's a hustle. You know what I mean? People are doing what they call in Philippines sidelines. Like everybody's got a sideline, you know? Yeah. They're selling stuff on the internet, you know, like Facebook. They're trying to get into real estate. They're trying to do all these things all the while working a job. I mean... Can you imagine making the equivalent of six dollars to ten dollars a day? I mean, so they gotta have sidelines. Yeah. You know, regular employees. Make like what? I think five hundred a day. That's the average. Yeah. But uh, I heard today in the radio they're raising the minimum thirty-eight more pesos. And and the thing about it too is you know you have to you have to look at it like this that you can't expect what you get in america here and you can't expect in america what you get here i mean you can you can buy a dozen eggs for like equivalent of two dollars here you know what i mean like stuff's cheap yeah. you can you can really go shopping and get a lot more for your money now especially with the inflation in the u.s but you know rent that's the biggest offset is rent like yeah, rent is crazy crazy cheap here like i live in the nicest neighborhood like literally nicest neighborhood next down the street from the vice president, some of the people in this country, and my rent is the equivalent of nine hundred dollars a month, like so, <laughs> for a four-bedroom yeah. house, custom big house, nine hundred dollars. Cheap rent. Cheap rent, and you can get into a place for fifty dollars on up. There, I mean, if I've heard of people pay two thousand pesos, three thousand pesos a month. Yeah, I mean, I mean that's, that's it's more towards like in the province, though. That's more provincial, yeah. Yeah, because my dad rents. That's how much he rents his house, like for three to five. K pesos a month. But I think in the city, to live comfortably, you're going to have to spend at least $300 for a good place, for a decent place. Like yeah. 15,000 pesos, 20,000 pesos gets you a decent place. That's not bad. That's not bad. Three, 
three to four hundred in between three to four hundred dollars you get a really nice place and that's more than just a one bedroom that's not a studio that's not a one bedroom that could be a two bedroom three bedroom and sometimes furnished even you know depending on how far out from the city center you are you know so i mean you can't go wrong and uh, and i think a lot a lot in america is like in america you're spending 80 percent of your income just on your rent alone where here if you're a you know on a on a pension or a budget or a whatever it may be that you have some money from the states i mean you're able to spend 20 percent instead of 80. you know what i mean like it's a lot better so the other thing is too you know is is uh if you're a, if you're an older gentleman and you're having a hard time in america trying to find the right woman a good woman philippines there's women everywhere. Lots of them. Lots of women. Lots and uh, lots and lots of women. Foreigner has the advantage. Foreigners have an advantage. You know, even even my buddy did. He's Filip Filipino born. Spent most of his life in America, honestly, and yet. It's not that I'm looking though. I'm not trying. He's not really trying or nothing like that. But they still like. If we all hang out, they always like. Stay with the foreigners, they'll like be like hitting on the foreigners, and you know what I mean. Not so much him because they're thinking, oh, he's just some local. You know what I mean? Like he's you catch that. Filipino. He's some Filipino. You know, and I and I try to tell him, oh yeah, he's from America. He's like, shh, shh, don't. You know yeah, what I man. mean? He's not trying it's to show that. Though. He's not trying to show that. You know. Pros, cons. Trans transportation here is cheap. The mm -hmm. GPs. Yeah. Yeah, you're talking probably about twenty-five cents. You know, a ride somewhere. You know, if you want to, it's not air conditioned. I mean, if you're a smaller person, it's okay. If you're, if you're, there are a lot of fat foreigners that come here. I mean, I'm a kind of a fat foreigner. I'm a big guy myself. I'm 235 pounds, so yeah, getting in a jeep me is kind of small. You'll take up like a three tricycle. Spaces. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, like a lot of taxi cabs, you're gonna spend at least five dollars a ride, around four bucks. And you'll go broke on average. every time. Though. If you do it a lot, you could go broke. Five dollars. You know, five dollars here and there. But uh, you know, food deliveries. People, you know, they they go shopping once in a while. Or they, a lot of foreigners will live in the city area, and so they just can walk, you know, to where they want to buy else? some. Weather it's definitely very very humid. Yeah, it's very. Bob's still sweating. I'm sweating right now. I've climatized. <laughs> yeah, no, it's 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 like Hawaii, but more humid. Few degrees hotter, Today was more hot. humid. Yeah, you can tell when it's Hawaii about to has rain. Breeze, though. Huh? Hawaii has breeze. Hawaii does have a breeze, and uh, you know that's something that here you don't have so much of a breeze. It's well, in the cities, so. in the cities, not too much tall buildings and stuff. Those uh, cons. Mm. Du dusty, very dusty. Very dusty. Yeah. Especially in the areas where they're doing a lot of developments, a lot of trucks getting, because uh, there's always road construction stuff going on. So, you know, mud from the tires, from the big, you know, uh, dump trucks, things like that. The road dry up, then it turns to dust and gets you dusty. Yeah. I mean, there's, but I tell you, like, you can go, you can go out in the province, you know, like out in the boondocks in the countryside. And you can go up in the mountains where the weather is, you know, 75 degrees, 70, 65 degrees Fahrenheit. Yeah. I don't know what that is in centigrade. We're Americans, so I'd, I'd, I'd say like 65. So yeah, I don't know what the centigrade. 25, probably around 23. 23. So it's very, you know, deciduous, uh, trop, subtrop, not subtrop, but like you get like... Uh, Pine trees and stuff in the mountains, you know, far up. You get more of the vegetables growing, fresh vegetables for a good price up in the mountains. So living in the mountains is uh, okay if you're not like the party type of guy, if you don't like to go out, if you don't need I malls. And me, I can't. I'm yeah. a party animal. I need to have people around me and go places an and animal. fancy stuff. I like fancy stuff. I'm an animal. Yeah, yeah. Really it's am. Simple life. With the yeah. bamboo fence, nice payag. You know, it's beautiful. It's a nice thing. I would be bored. I I get too bored too busy. fast. Plant Anxiety. Some, um, Okra. <laughs> Plant some long beans. Some. 
calabasa. The one thing about Philippines, I would say, there's yeah, never a shortage beaches. of like little resorts. Ever. Yeah, so there's a nice, a lot of abundance. Like you drive the corner there. Oh look, there's a resort. You go here, there. Yeah, and you're talking two, three dollars entrance fees. Use their swimming pools, cheap price foods, different things, water slides. Nothing like crazy water slides, like huge ones. I mean, there's a few parks like that. I think Seven Seas is one. It's really big. Yeah, they have a big water park up in Osamis area. But most of the places, they have one or two slides. Like, my kids love it. It's a great place to raise kids. The schooling, the teachers are very you know, respectful, and they teach the kids respect. And over here, it's still a little bit of faith-based. You know, people have a fear of God, and, you know, people build Christ. You know, it's not it's not like the West Western society where it's kind of just, you know, godless now. I mean, I'm not saying it's godless because I know a lot of good Christians in America and a lot of good, uh, you know, people. But over here, it's like they don't really separate church and state. Even though it's separated, it's still, it's allowed. You go pray in schools, you can still. So your kids get values. My kids go to school here. I would rather raise my kids here than America. Um, as far as extracurricular activities for kids, eh. Not much, huh? No, there's no, there's really no sports. There's no track and field. There's no football. There's no baseball. None of that stuff here. No wrestling. So, um, yeah, kids, basketball, basketball, and and pool, <laughs> tennis, and tennis, chicken fighting. <laughs> I don't know if that's really a sport, but that's, you know, that's illegal, though. No? Yeah, it's legal here. No, chicken. That's illegal. Is it illegal? In the province, you can only do it like on certain days. You can. Ah. Uh. Yeah, that's what my cousin was telling me. He got arrested. He got arrested. <laughs> I could imagine, dude. Yeah. Chicken fighting. You know, I've, I've never been to Sabong my whole life. Seen it on TV. I seen it on the internet. They actually had like a... Online. Online. online yeah. After COVID, it was a big thing. Online, Sabong. 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 <laughs> Sabong is good. Sabong. That's soup. Chicken soup. Sabong. No, Sabong. Chicken fighting. Yeah. Oh, what else? What else? Huh? What else? Right. Yeah, well, you know. I mean, there's definitely a lot of like nice beaches. That's... Uh, Pro. Nice beaches. I would say the Visayas. If you're a beach guy, check out the Visayas. Mindanao is more mountains. It's really mountainous, yeah, yeah. mountainous but it's also real, like, uh, I would say for the city is really, it's becoming more, it's a higher pace. It's more of a city. You know what I mean? Like Davao City is a city. It's not, we have plenty of malls. We have great shopping. We have great Oh, dude. You know, Malls food establishments. Crazy. Nice bars, classy bars. Classier than the stuff that I've spent most of my bar time in the States. I mean, this bars here are way classier. Um, you know, anything. You want to ride motorcycles. You know, they, got, they start out little. You'll see a lot of people on little bikes. There are some big bikes. The big bikes are quite a bit more expensive. Little bikes are cheap if you just want some cheap uh, transportation. Thousand, right? Thousand bucks, thousand dollars, easy. Yeah. Even then, you could put nice one hundred cc, one two five. And that's brand new price. We're talking. We're not talking used. Yeah. Like used, you can get something for like four or five hundred bucks, easy used. Yeah. And so, like, if you come here on vacation or you come in here for like to stay, you found a girl online and you're wanting to meet up and do this, like, bring enough money to maybe if you're planning on staying for a while to buy a little bike have a little bike to cruise around you know what i mean um yeah or you could rent or rent a lot of the a lot of the beachy places have bike rentals but four or five hundred pesos a day yeah um, a lot of them even 300 i think i think I know Bo, that's how much they're going 300 for four or five hundred oh they raised i went there i was paying 300 but same with Sherigal was like three hundred, but now I think it, you're right. It's went up probably four or five hundred. You're talking eight nine bucks a day, but uh, if you're planning on staying though, it's it's good to have a motorcycle. It's good to have a motorcycle. It's good to have a car. And if you can afford a car, get a car. But yeah, that's, it's good. But yeah. traffic here is. It's true. 
crazy. So just have yeah. to bear with it. And like all those bikes were going in and out in between the cars. I yeah. That's how I get most of my scratches. Yeah. The one thing about it is when you have a motorcycle, um, if you're out in the province and you're just doing little, you know, going to the sorry, sorry, going down the hills, going around, you know, tooting around out to the yeah, beach, doing some, good. it's good. If you're going to try to run groceries and stuff. Yeah, taxi is the way to go. You know, if you're going to a big, you know, mall to go shopping and stuff, yeah, just take taxis. Yeah. yeah taxi. Um, if you have a big family, extended family, like if you're dating a girl that's got a bunch of kids and uh, you come over here and you're going to be like, uh, very noble of you to like take on take a woman with <laughs> take care of everybody you know you probably want to have a little car which, you know which, at least it's you're, it's gonna happen once you meet a nice lady yeah end up you know she has family and that's just uh flipping away because they're so um family family oriented yeah you know in this culture uh They'll strive to put their children through school so one day their children can help take care of them. So they'll do whatever it takes, the means necessary to make sure that they're getting to be successful because that is their retirement in the end. Because without their kids, when they get old, they will not be taken care of, really. I mean, we don't really have homes for the aged or, uh, you know, Which is cause you, you don't, you don't need to. In the Philippines, they... Philippine culture, they take care of the parents. Oh, and yeah. In America, you put them in a retirement home. When it becomes an inconvenience. That's so messed up, though. But, hey, culture. Culture, yeah, cultural difference. You know, and, and in this culture, you'll have, uh, what happens is, is your parents will raise you up, put you through school. You eventually get married, have children. Then your parents watch your children while you're working, and you provide for the house. So you then the provider. You take care of your parents. You take care of your children's needs. So, you know, that's why it takes two working people. In America, you've got to find a babysitter. America, you got to find a babysitter. And so the thing with a lot of the houses, a lot of the locals, it just passes through the generation, you know, yeah. and they keep living in. Like, there's a lot of independence in the late, in the last, you know, few Few years since like virtual assistants and you know people that are getting into technologies like writing code and computer programming and a lot of outsourcing to the philippines here so you're having families that are now able to buy their own houses their own cars i mean when i first moved here you didn't hardly see privately owned vehicles it was taxis and like a few cars now it's like the roads are packed with cars because the banks are given better interest rates. People are getting more outsourced um, income from the states, you know, working um, online for, you know, the internet is rich, all that. So, um, yeah. But uh, I would say if, you, if, you, if you're coming here and you don't have a source of income um, that you can bring here, like either like an online job or some sort of a... Yeah, because that's the only way you can really make it. I mean, if you have, like, people come here, they'll sell their stuff, and they'll be like, I'm going to open a restaurant, or I'm going to open this. And a lot of them fail because it's not the fact that their food isn't good. It's not the fact that it might not be a good idea. It's the fact that the cultural difference with employing people is different. Yeah, that, too. And in the Philippines, you always, mm. somebody's going to copy that. Right off the bat. Yeah, exactly. And You're right. The same thing. Lower price, you know. Next prices, door to you. Like, <laughs> literally, because that, that, that happened to my cousin. Yeah. <laughs> it's crazy. Like, in the province, in uh, Pi Piapi. In Piapi. Yeah, she, had, she opened, like, a Sorry Sorry store. At first, she said it's doing good. And then somebody else opened. Yeah. And then they got the idea. And then she goes, you know what? I'm going to get, like, a Petro Wi-Fi. And then the they person did it. Too. Did, did it. <laughs> <laughs> well, and that's the thing. Like you, it's crazy. That's how you, did it together. you, you really gotta, you gotta be, you gotta be on it. You gotta have something that that no one else has that they can't copy you. So, them had a sorry, sorry store with a piece of net. Someone copied her. Yeah, everything. And and that and that's so crazy. Like here in the Philippines, when I first got here, there was no burger joints. There was like McDonald's and Minute Burger. Like that yeah. was it. Oh, food and it's is definitely big. 
that's, oh. that's why I noticed. Food is um I think one thing is lacking is there's not much if you do you like legit Mexican food? Non existent in Philippines. Real legit Mexican food there's does that not one, exist. Uh, in Manila. In Makati. Oh Makati, yeah, yeah. What is that? El Chupacabre. Yeah. That's good. You gotta go there. But as far as like per capita people there are here, like it's no really good Mexican. Yeah. Not a really it's good crazy, Mexican. Huh? Yeah, it's crazy. And then like uh There's other cultured food but not Mexican. Not Mexicans. Not Mexican food. You There's not many Mex I've only met like three Mexicans here in the Philippines either. Oh, yeah. So you know, it's cultures you don't find too much. I mean, it's good. I like Mexican food. Yeah. Pizza is very competitive now. When I first moved here, pizza I don't know you about was pizza here, man. I'm still kinda like it's not like well, you must have been to some real crap places then. Yeah. It's like ketchup sauce or whatever. Yeah. Anyways, that concludes our show for today. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. We're going to be doing another one. And, uh, episode one. Episode one. If you have any questions, comment. Um, yeah, like and subscribe. Thanks. Peace. Peace. Thank you for watching. Yep. Cheers. Cheers, man.